Welcome to another edition of the Gamer Gambit, where a fateful roll of the proverbial dice will fill you with awe or indifference. Welcome back, Corey. Welcome back. <laughs> what have you got for us today? Okay, I have a game called Luminous Corridor that was authored by Loren Schmidt. And this is a twin stick shooter game. So I will start. All right. So my game was uh, Luminous Corridor, again, written by Loren Schmidt. It is a twin stick shooter and uh, very akin to, I guess, what would now be on Xbox, whatever else is like Geometry Dash. So one stick moves you around um, and one stick uh, handles fire, uh, handles firing. Okay. So I didn't really see um, any anything from like, you know, a theme or whatever perspective. And you can't control the screens or the flashes in, in the introduction as far as trying to understand what the creatures are, their names or what they do, their purpose or anything. But um, so this is me. And the goal of the game is to collect all the Psy crystals. And the Psy crystals are those, when you see those squares mm -hmm. pop up, that is when one of those gets damaged. Um, then they go into a timer, and if you, just like you saw me there, if you sneak in and grab it, then it won't explode. Um, however, if it does explode, you die, obviously. Oh, okay. And um, the explosions change, so if there's any Psy Crystals that are in the explosion of one, then those will all trigger that timer to explode. Um, otherwise, they're the various creatures, they come at you from different reasons, and this was the, this was the second game that I played. Okay. Um, it's pretty. So you intense. can see this. Like it's uh, it's kind of hard to follow all of that action. Right. There's a lot going on, and um, the, the problem is is loss of, and maybe it's me, um, being um, partial colorblind, or not. I don't know. But um, where some of the polish I think would have been better to add to the game would be um, when you die. I couldn't tell if there is like a. Um, an invulnerability timer or not but if it, there is one it's very short because a couple times I've died very close quick succession but the game it gives you um, you know this shooter and it shoots this web mesh stuff um, that's all over the screen and you see those big those big lines when they come across yeah. they are warnings that 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 particular creature type is coming to lay down more of that stuff okay and the so what I Wait, was your score That's the whole entire game that time? Um, I think so. So my score started to get a little bit better and then worse and then better. And then I had a really good game and then a whole bunch of crappy games after that. Um, yeah. And I realized that I was not going to top that game. Um, <laughs> I did not. But one thing that would have made this a lot easier to play would have been with a actual dual uh, twin stick controller. Oh, I was going to ask you. So I didn't have one. Using. Did you use right. the, the um, classic I, palm I, I, controller? Is that what it was? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the the game, the default controls for the game are actually arrow keys to move and WASD for firing, and that did not work well with my brain. No, no just from playing consoles or whatever else. I need to. Yes, I need to move with the left hand, left stick. So. Um, I gave it a quick five second test drive with ha having my hands crossed on the keyboard and then <laughs> I officially made the switch. So the game does the game does let, uh, at least um, let you the, the controls that are in here to, to do are very minimum yeah. or options rather. You just start the game and play or adjust your control. Um, so I adjusted controls and I started to do immensely better at least in my, my hand brain thing. But other than that, basically if you touch anything other than the Psy Crystals, you die. Um, and you, you have the that four, you the, can see in the top right there, the four lives. Is that true of the webbing as well? Yes. You so you'll see me a couple stuff. times in here. I bump so into the bump into it. Right. And that's where I ran into problems with, yes, with the invulnerability timer is because sometimes I've died from a crystal explosion or whatever else. And then I act as I respawn because I haven't realized yet that I have died. Mm -hmm. I respawn and then I instantly move into one of those that's now close to the center of the screen where you respawn yeah. and I die again. And then, and then that's when I realized that I died the first time and then very quickly realized that I actually died twice as part of that first time. Right. Um, but this is, this is a soul game. Um, on my, 
score or rating, I believe I gave it a two. Okay. Um, I gave it a two. So for, for art, I gave it a, a, a zero. Um, Didn't float your Even back. though this, it kind of fits. But, well, it's, it's, it's not that. It's, I didn't really see... I didn't really see much of a pattern or theme or anything explained. Not necessarily that there would have to be some type of narrative or story, which also, you know, got got a zero. You're just go collect these psi crystals, and you appear to be some type of person figure. So, you know, whether you're actually, you know, like in space or on the ground in some in some area. I, area is the wrong word. In some most you know, future futuristic area where there are aliens going you know there, there wasn't really anything to tie the art together with what you're doing or the art together with each other okay. so are these like just all aliens or not are these various forms of aliens and being able to identify that was harder at least playing the game because the the screens for the game would flash very quickly where you couldn't sit there and read it so you would have right. to You'd have to actually record or whatever the game is so that way you could pause on that screen and read what each of the creatures are or what they do um which is it's more of description if i recall i'd have to pause it I, we can go back and check and pause it in the video but um so a sense of there, there wasn't a sense of scalability or difficulty but from an art perspective i didn't i didn't see or notice anything that tied what kind of um graphic style they were going for um so that was that was the the, the reason for me for that score mm -hmm. um like mechanics i gave it a zero for that also um i'm familiar with some twin stick shooters and there wasn't really anything that I identified in this to really be a mechanic outside of don't touch anything right and fire at anything but the crystals so you could when i tried to place that against something like geometry dash um I would say, well, there are other mechanics that they put in Geometry Dash, such as in, in some of the variations of it anyway, that are like get out of jail free cards, where if stuff gets so overwhelming, you can go and pick up a, an item that is that temporarily comes up on the screen. You yeah. can go over and get it. It's like a board reset, yeah, right? Yeah. So you can you can straight, like or have a bigger weapon or whatever. Right. Yeah. So there there was there's something to help you. Maybe you're maybe you shoot faster or maybe you clear out more of this webbing per bullet you know there was nothing yep. there from a mechanic standpoint to yeah to go on um so i gave it a zero for that uh controls from a twin stick shooter standpoint you move with one you fire with the other so i, I gave it i gave it a one um that's what's in their description that hey this is a twin stick shooter you can do just that um and i'd, I'd imagine i'd be would have been maybe a little bit more successful off. being yeah. having a controller rather than the keyboard so i mean i thought in all fairness that was a one um story i mentioned before i couldn't give it i couldn't there wasn't anything that it looked like was put in place to kind of try to tie a, a tie anything together even last last week um what was the name of the the, the previous patches of adventure that i did last mm -hmm. week or last time um even then it at least had one screen that said hey the mayor is looking for people to go collect these you be the first go at it i mean it was at least, it was at least a paragraph of why am i playing you know what what's my purpose um i didn't i didn't see that um either with this so story was a zero and then the sound um the sound i went with a one as well um with this i think that there could have been maybe a little bit more uh, of an improvement or polish around it but as far as um some decent like midi that's going on in the background that's not too annoying that loops over and over and over again it doesn't distract you from the game so that was that what if they whether they made it or you know purchased it or if the, the person who did the sound made it um they made it where at least it wasn't a turn off to play the game versus right. the patches of adventure game the sound from firing was was very ear scratching it made you it made you not want to use to use it but and that was a core mechanic of the game right um and then the same thing with this the firing the firing is pretty low key to hear it you know repeat and repeat you can kind of just if a twin stick shooter thing is your thing um you know check this out um but from a, if, you, if you're not familiar with twin stick shooters or how they play I, I would probably recommend not playing this or at least checking out something that's a little more polished in the genre to get a to get a feel for it or else this one's going to maybe leave you with initial sour cake it's a very arcade console i mean it would be right at home on some sort of pie cabinet or something like that i'm sure it won't run on that but that feel that's the kind of feeling that i get looking at it
Um, and um, other, honestly, the uh, the mechanic of like the how the screen alerts you to. Oh, oh, oh! This is where I got the farthest, where I actually got an intermission type of cutscene, <laughs> and I was so surprised on it. And then some of the stuff changed. Oh yeah, yeah. But the webbing. So like some of the colors on, yeah, the web webbing stuff changed. Um, and one of the other things that harder. I gave it a negative score on was well right was difficulty that didn't seem like to be that there was much difficulty scaling but that could have been because i could not get far enough into into the game yeah so that was that so i actually got to 60 um and i tried to get there again and the closest i could get was 43. <laughs> so if i hold on if i if i pause it at one of these screens so it talks being able to get through all this yeah about the, this. the things resonate psi matrix the crystals were stolen so I, I didn't get a chance to really read this i guess i guess you're you're the psi guy has powerful sonic powers and a very handsome mustache i did not notice that part um so this this would have been good to know um an extra <laughs> life right that there was something that i could actually run into that was beneficial to me right but in the game there was no way to and if, if I if I rewind it all the way back to the beginning, um, this is the the actual initial screen as it's just sitting there idle. I'll play mm. it. Yeah. So that's not fast enough for me to read and look you know look at the icons and then read and then it goes into the you know the idle gameplay. Right. So that would have been something to at least uh, help with your audience from. Um, Here's things you can run into or not run into. Um, it does have two-player local co-op as well, um, which um, I, I did, I did not way. explore. Yeah. Uh, possibly, if assuming that there other things don't scale. So if I made up numbers right. and I said, you got to that second level or intermission screen after 50, then assuming that didn't say, oh, we're playing with two people, so now it's 60 or 75 or... It's 100. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, I got to wave five, but the, I mean, you know, the point of this game is just endless, endless waves. I don't know. I um, mean, it didn't say in the description if there was actually, you know, up to 100 waves or anything mm -hmm. like that, or if it's just some and some type of algorithm of we'll just keep tweaking these numbers, which should make the game more difficult and call a wave every time you get past X that forces the increase of those. And then if you can, if you can get to wave 5,000, then go ahead. <laughs> Um, but that's um, Luminous Corridor. Okay. Uh, authored by Loren. And it was two out of five, you said? Two out of five. Okay, so uh, my video was actually, or my game was actually Hot Pot Panic. And this was by Keneri, perhaps. Uh, K-E-A-N-E-R-I-E. -E. Um, so Hot Pot Panic. Uh, is it sets place in a restaurant where you are meeting a friend and you have to manage the stress of talking with your friend and the brief instructions give you this kind of this introduction, but you, you have to talk to your friend while you manage your food in the hot pot. And the whole object of the game is to uh, cook your food to perfection so that you can eat it, um, but also pay attention to your friend's conversation. So I throw things into the pot I watch them because I don't know how long it's going to take. And then I get clued in that I need to actually have a conversation with my friend. So um, <laughs> the game will draw you in. Uh, so sometimes it takes decisions out of your hand. So the timing is, is a little careful here. Like if you wait too long, it'll draw you up. And you noticed right as I drew up, my, my food started turning sparkly. That, that means it's good. And so the... Each of the levels brings this banter about that, um, it, like it'll give you a brief uh, statement and then after a few seconds, she'll come back and say, ask you some question about it and then you have to answer the question. So that's basically it. And you have to keep going down and up, right? You lose the conversation when you look down and you have to answer the conversation that hopefully matches, you know, what she was talking about. So first level is pretty easy. It was just kind of getting used to how the controls work and the timing of each of the food items. Um, and then with each level, and you can always order more food, but with with each level, and actually you'll see the next level come up here as I finish up this particular round. 
So watching the food, watching the conversation. Oh, what was that? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Something about a deaf dog. I got it. Okay. So collect my food. And then there's like this delay where you kind of have to wait and uh, see what the answers are going to be. So then I have to pick whichever one seemed to fit the conversation. <laughs> and if you mess up, then she calls you out for not listening. Um, but fortunately, I just finished that level and so it didn't matter. So it kind of gives you some stats. What's the penalty if you just guess wrong all the time? Uh, you will lose the game. Uh, she'll say, hey, you're not listening to me. And so you see here too in level two, the wall color has changed. That's different. But also the questions are much longer. Uh, and so yeah. looking away, you, there are details that you're going to miss. And in level three, which I didn't show, but I went to that as well. But in level three, which is the last level, incidentally, um, the questions or the statements are very long. The stories are very long. And uh, so then, you know, it's a little bit little bit more difficult to get the answers perfect but by the time you're in level three like you you kind of know the game so you know the timing you can go up and down so it's it's really short there's not a whole lot to it um it's kind how of did you how did you put how did you put things i mean i saw the stuff where said it was talking about was in the beginning but yeah. how did you like put things in or out did you you just did you burn things it. yeah you just click on it and then you wait and if it turns black then it's burned and you don't get any food credit for it um, and you can order more food and you put it in. So the only penalty for overcooking your food is that it doesn't fill your stomach. And the only way you win the round is by completely filling your stomach without getting, I think it was three strikes uh, from your friend. If you get the, the answers to her questions wrong three times, then she says, you're not listening to me. Why are we doing this? <laughs> uh, and it was funny reading some of the comments about the game. Uh, people were saying, this is a really relaxing game i you know i enjoy this style and then some people were saying, have a conversation and cooking yeah yeah and then oh, some God. people were saying this this game is so stressful you know i uh it's so difficult having to to switch between talking to your friend and playing the game i love it you know <laughs> and i just thought for subsequent play for subsequent playthroughs is are all the questions the same can you memorize them and then you just score perfect they're in different on, they're, they're in different cool. order they um so the questions i think are generally the same but they they vary the order up and they may vary the details up a little bit. Um, in general, at least in the first couple levels, you can clue on to a couple of words and you'll know how to answer it. Um, but by the third level, it's much easier to lose because if you just like glance at it and you're like, oh yeah, dog. Okay, I know how to answer that. Then uh, you're, you're entirely likely to get that wrong <laughs> for not paying attention. Um, so I did lose the game at one point because I was... Uh, just going up and grabbing it, you know, I was just switching back and forth. And so, yeah, she, she calls you at her three times and says, you're not, you're not listening to me. And so game over. So the game is, so was there, sorry, yeah. is there, is there a, a, a timing? Is there a way you can also maybe, maybe game the system, so to speak, strategize better. Can you strategize, um, based on waiting for the conversation interaction and then looking down doing some stuff coming back up or is it is the conversation seem to be more have maybe be a reaction to triggers from putting in a piece of food you know whatever else down in the pot that it's waiting for you to get it's, something cooking before it's not it. quite that advanced um the but the the timing of certain foods is different so the the mushrooms is different than the tofu is different than the kale you know so there's different timing so what i wound up doing was putting in all of one type of food because then you knew basically how long it was for that type of food to be done and so you could look up and when the first thing was ready, you knew all the things would be ready and you could, you could glance back down and grab them all and then dump them all back in. The only thing okay. that the game did that I thought was kind of tricky was that it would, if you waited too long, if you tried to, like you're saying, if you tried to game it a little bit, it would force you to pull back up and look at your friend and answer the question or start another line of discussion. And so those were moments where you could lose the thing that you were watching because it was just about to be ready, and then you were pulled up instead of you being able to control it. Oh, I see. The other thing was uh, you could actually split the view a little bit so that you could see the top of your pot and still see your friend talking, see the part of the conversation. And so if you had all the same kind of food, then you would obviously know when everything was ready. You could just flip back down and grab it all. Um, so it, wasn't, it, it isn't a difficult game. 
Uh, it isn't, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's just very lightweight. There's only three rounds to it. Uh, there's not really any meaning to those stories. They're, they're a little bit silly, you know, but they're like, there's not anything that really builds on itself in the game. Did you end up, did you end up beating it? Beating yeah, the whole yeah. Game? you play through the three rounds and then it's like, this was so much fun. We should do this again. You know, I, I love coming to these things with you and this restaurant is so good and you're such a good uh, listener or something like that. You know, it just gives you lots of compliments. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was, I mean, for our 10th episode, which is kind of a big deal, right? It was, uh, it was lightweight game. Um, but, uh, but you know, it was, it was easy enough to get through scoring wise. I gave it a three out of five and I debated whether or not it would be two out of five, but based on our criteria, I, um, I didn't like the art and that's mainly because it's sort of, it reminded me of a Nintendo 64 game. It kind of split the difference between, uh, oh, you're, you're trying to pass into 3d, but you, you definitely don't have the tools to create that yet, or maybe you have very rudimentary skills in being able to create the models. So it's, it's very rudimentary, but then even more than that, like the, the resolution of the models were just so low. The textures were so, you know, so it was just all really pixelated and kind of jagged. And so I, yeah, I felt like I was playing an N64 game, which maybe was part of the design. I don't, I don't know. Um, didn't float my boat though. And then, uh, the mechanics, there really was nothing to it. It was just, um, the putting things in, eating it, talking to the person, you know, there wasn't a whole lot that you could really do in the game. Um, but controls, I wound up giving one because the controls of like the simplicity of it was very intuitive, looking up, look down, click your food to put it in, you know, all of that. And the, the prompting that you got was all pretty elegant, you know, so I, I thought all that worked pretty well. Um, I gave it a one for story, and this was one I thought about giving it a zero for, but in story, I, I mean, there isn't really a story, but at the same time, for the purpose of this game, uh, it was all there. You know, it, it gave you enough narrative to kind of show you what you were trying to do. And then the sound was another one of those where it wasn't obnoxious sound. It just kind of sat in the background pleasantly and wasn't a real big deal. Um, so well, know, the story I, was her story. If you were right. listening, it was, it was her. Yeah. If I were listening, I would just, I would, but no. <laughs> yeah. So it was all right. Short and sweet. Right. Yeah. Um, my, yeah, mine, mine was, uh, mine was as well. Yeah. I think yours had a bit more action to it. So perhaps even replayability, if you really felt like being competitive with yourself, <laughs> Or, or with uh, just going farther and taking that as a, a local co-op option. Uh, that's true. Yeah, that, couch on 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 the couch with one other person, and you know you're just kind of going can be through the levels as seeing, well. Yeah. How far you can get. All right, so are we going to roll up and see what we get for next week? If we're, I think we're ready for it. Hot on. Up. All right, so uh, Chook and Sausage Walk the Plank. That looks actually pretty funny. You have to click on that see. to see what that actually is. It's a mischievous, charming, and character-driven adventure. It's the first full-length premium Chook and Sausage game from series creator Tuki Paluki, published by Armor Game Studios. The graphics are charming. Um, so you've got that. I don't know. They, if the, or the intro screen, anyway, the opening screen. Yeah, there's a there's a little trailer video on the page. There's a little trailer video. Um, along with friends, Chicken Sausage, get creative while we're playing as pirates. We need to uh, hunt for fabled treasure. You need to some paths, blah, 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 to join your quest. Join a ghostly chicken and a wobbly spaghetti cat as they seek able treasures, solve puzzles, and where. Okay, so it looks like it's a little bit more engaging than the last two games. Okay, so. yeah, cool. Uh, an adventure. Yeah. Um, adventure and mine is called Null Pointer, which uh, is downloadable, not just a browser game, so that's good. 
Uh, but it's a procedurally generated first person shooter uh, fighting through dangerous hell zone of online. Uh, the English isn't so great, but advanced through unlimited dungeon floors, uh, vertically oriented combat, level up options. So perhaps different than what you ran through today. And then of course a synth wave soundtrack. So we'll, we'll see how that, we'll see how that, that just sounds pretty neat. Right? And I, I love the game name too. Yeah. It's it, awesome. It looks bizarre, so that that should be uh, visually interesting at the very least. But yeah, I haven't done a first-person shooter with this yet, so this should be entertaining. You're not epileptic, are you? No, I think I'll be safe on this one. I'd be or got a, maybe a queasy stomach or Definitely. something. Looks like there's going to be a lot, a lot going on yeah. visually. Caveat emptor for those of you watching this next week. This one may trigger you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Corey. Uh, good game as usual. Good game, Olaf.